Hey, I'm Nav Sanga, and I run Wrong Bar in Toronto, Canada. Wrong Bar opened in the fall of 2007. I'd actually had my eyes on this particular spot that Wrong Bar is in for a couple of years. The landlord chose somebody else. They put in a fine dining restaurant or something. So I stalked him. Uh, his name's Abe and I called him like nonstop uh, for two years. And finally I picked up the phone one day and it was Abe. He's like, okay, it's time. The first time I met Nav was my, also my first day working for Wrong Bar. I was begging him for a job and one day I just showed up, introduced myself, and he put me to work that day. I've been there ever since for about seven years. One night we had fake blood playing the club, and I believe it was like his second time playing there. It was absolute mayhem. And I remember just being completely swamped, like not prepared. It was the funniest thing. I swung open the front door to the club, and there's a mob of people out, out, outside of the club, and I recognized this one dude, and I was like, hey! Can you work now? And just like grabbed him and that was it. And Steve's been part of Wrong Bar. I'd be, I'd definitely be in a lot of trouble with that Steve. The first time that, that we got brought in as Natural Animal to DJ, it was closing for Sirkin. The place was completely packed and sweaty and we were both super nervous. And we went on and sure enough, didn't mess it up. And uh, that birthed into Saturday Night Residency for just over two years. For me, I was like, I really want a place where it's not a dance club, but people can still you know, appreciate this music. It was all about taking dance and electronic music out of the you know, very typical dance club environment and trying to have something a little more gritty, a little more like a pub, a lot like the Queen's Head, which is where I had a lot of fun um, playing back around that time. What's special about the room? I would say the history. All types of acts from, you know, as popular as, as Drake all the way down to the local uh, bedroom producer who no one knows. But the breadth of acts you get in Wrong Bar is pretty amazing. The, the, the concept of Wrong Bar is not limiting ourselves to one sound. I grew up on punk rock. That's, that's the first music I was in love with. It was like hardcore bands, the hardcore scene here in Toronto. Like the power of music is so much more important than like, you know, oh, I'm a minimal techno DJ. I'm a progressive house DJ. I'm a disc DJ. There's something running through all of it. There's, and, and, and that's kind of what we want to be part of. Wrong Bar's had a lot of great artists come that a lot of people didn't really know about. I mean, I think Gautier played Wrong Bar and their next play was like the ACC or something like that. Good Disclosure is another great one. Allo Black, like I mentioned earlier, Subtract. Skrillex, obviously. Within, I think, two years, that guy went from selling out Wrong Bar to selling out two shows at Cool House. You know, luckily I, we have so many great promoters in this city. You'd be hard pressed in North America to find um, as many creative promotional companies as we have in this city. The Heineken Great Grooms here has been great for us because it gives us the opportunity to bring in a, a bigger budget to create a bigger experience for the people coming through the room, to bring in bigger DJs that maybe we couldn't necessarily do on our own. The one thing Heineken has really helped us with at the club is, is they've enabled us to kind of, you know, push this like big DJ, small club way of bookings. I'd say the last two to three years, we've seen a huge like boom in festival culture. And what that's meant for a lot of small to mid-sized clubs like Wrong Bar is uh, it's become a lot more challenging to compete with festivals all across North America. You know, Heineken's definitely uh, been a great supporter. I mean, some of the, the names they've helped us book from anything from Hot Chip, to uh, The Magician, like a lot of artists that we um, otherwise may not have been able to uh, host at Wrong Bar, they've, they've uh, enabled that for us. I think Nav does an incredible job booking acts at Wrong Bar. He genuinely loves music and he places that at times above making money. He's like one of the hardest working guys I know. He does it because he loves the music and he loves the people that come out. Running a business that way is really important. The, the thing that drove me to this business was a love for music. I mean, that's the main reason I'm here. 
but then you get caught up in, you know, in the day-to-day -day and the mire of running a business. And it's just that constant, you know, constantly reminding yourself that you're here for the music first and staying excited and, and making sure that you're kind of exposing yourself and following new music as it's breaking. And that, after all, is what drives the audience. You kind of don't want to don't want to lose touch with that. So we sort of let the music scene dictate what we do. I think right now, electronic music, as I said, is sort of moving out of the smaller rooms and into bigger clubs and festivals in the summer. And I think more of a live aspect is going to come back to the room. I think people want to have that sort of organic, like live, people, more than just a DJ on stage. And I think that's what we're sort of focusing on. The best part of my job is, it's, 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 it's the music. That's it. It's quite simple. Yeah.